I'm Tamara DeGaio. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. You know, elderberry syrup is a powerfully preventative and healing natural medicine, and it's easy to collect your own wild berries and make your own syrup. I'm going to show you how, and we're going to add in some additional spices to make it even more effective. Elderberry syrup is a staple in the home herbalist apothecary, and like every herb, there is a short window of time to gather and preserve this vital natural medicine. For us here in the Midwestern United States, the berries usually ripen in August. We only use the black elderberries, and you want to be careful when you're out gathering wild elderberries for two things. First, be sure to gather in an area that has not been sprayed, and you want to make certain you're gathering elderberries, not accidentally gathering pokeberries. You know, they usually grow right next to one another, and they're both dark purple when they're ripe. But elderberries grow in an umbel shape. Think like an umbrella. But pokeberries grow in a cluster hanging down like grapes, so they're easy to tell apart when you know what to look for. When I go to collect elderberries, I take my clippers and a big stainless steel bowl, and I hold the bowl under the berries with one hand and sniff the stem of the berries with my other hand, letting them fall into the bowl. You want to be careful not to compress the berries because they will ferment quickly. So you're going to need to process them right away. If you don't have time to make your syrup right away, just stuff all the berry heads in a big zipper freezer bag and pop them into the freezer until you have time to work with them. Here's what we need. We're going to need a pan with a lid. We're going to need some scissors, some purified water, elderberries, of course, and any add-ins you want to use. Now, if you don't have access to fresh elderberries, you can do all of this with dried organic elderberries. Just follow the same steps and add a little more water. The elderberries are the star of the show, of course, and for good reason. You know, they are high in flavonoids that disrupt a virus's ability to replicate. They've been shown to be effective against multiple strains of influenza, including H1N1. In clinical trials, Patients with the flu taking elderberry found it remarkably helpful. 20% reported significant improvement within 24 hours, 70% by 48 hours, and 90% claimed a complete cure after only three days. The ones who were taking placebo took six days to recover. The researchers found that those who were taking elderberry actually had higher levels of antibodies against the flu virus in their bloodstream. Now, other research shows that elderberry directly inhibits the influenza virus. So it's a really important medicine to have in our apothecaries. Now, I'm going to use some spices to add flavor and to boost the effectiveness of my elderberry syrup. There are loads of options when it comes to add-ins. Here are a few of the ones that I like to use. The first one I want to talk about is star anise. Star anise is an eight-pointed star of slender pods, and each of those pods contains a seed. It has been used for thousands of years in Chinese medicine for all kinds of things. One thing it does is it helps to thin and clear mucus from the respiratory tract. It helps to reduce the inflammation of arthritis. It's used as a digestive aid to relieve gas and bloating. And this star is currently the star of the show in modern medicine that you may have heard of. It's the starter ingredient for Tamiflu, the most commonly prescribed flu medication for treating the flu. You know, star anise is a powerful ally to fight all kinds of infection, viral, bacterial, and fungal. Some of the compounds found in star anise have been found to kill cancer cells and reduce damage to brain cells. Star anise tastes sweet and it tastes a flavor of licorice, cinnamon, and clove, but it's very strong, so a little goes a long way. We're just going to use one of these in our elderberry syrup. There are two things to do when using star anise. First, count the points on the star and be sure there are only eight points because sometimes star anise has been adulterated with poisonous Japanese star anise, which has 10 or more points. Also, you want to test for freshness. So just break off a point and squeeze it until the seed pops out. And then you should be able to smell it immediately. It smells a lot like licorice. And if you can't smell it, it's past its prime and you might need some new spices. Next one I want to talk about is cinnamon. I'm going to add cinnamon in because cinnamon is not only delicious, sweet, and spicy and warming, but it also helps to stabilize blood sugars and has many other medicinal qualities. The most commonly used cinnamon is cassia cinnamon. And it's fine to use a little cassia cinnamon short term, but for medicine and for regular use, I recommend searching out Ceylon cinnamon. The cassia cinnamon 
has high coumarin content, which isn't good for our livers over time. And although both are sold as cinnamon here in the United States, Ceylon is actually the true cinnamon. And in other places like Europe, cassia can't even be marketed as cinnamon. Something else I want to add in is cloves. Cloves are strongly flavorful and powerfully antioxidant. They are also powerfully effective against pathogenic bacteria and viruses, and they help keep blood flowing. Another thing I want to add is allspice berries. Allspice is one of my all-time favorite spices and a staple in my kitchen. It's like a blend of both the flavors and the healing properties of all these other spices I've talked about put together. In blind sniff tests, allspice has been confused with nutmeg, cinnamon, black pepper, juniper berry, and most often clove. And that's probably because one of allspice's constituents is the same as clove, eugenol. But allspice has even more going for it than cloves do. In fact, it has over two dozen compounds that we know of with a wide variety of healing actions. It's warming, anti-inflammatory, it can help uh, regulate menstruation, it soothes the stomach, and even provide mild pain relief. Not to mention, it's an incredibly powerful antioxidant that can help fight both bacterial and viral infections. Did you know that all of these spices I've talked about come from evergreen trees? Trees. Star anise is the fruit of an evergreen tree that's native to China. Cinnamon is the bark of an evergreen tree. Cassia comes from India and China and Ceylon cinnamon comes from Sri Lanka. I'm also going to add in some cardamom and nutmeg, two other staples in my kitchen. All of these add-ins are completely optional and others I've used include licorice root, chisandra berries, hawthorn berries, rose hips, and fresh or dried orange or lemon peels. For making elderberry syrup, we're going to put all these spices in fairly whole because we're gonna simmer them. And if we broke them down too much, flavor would be lost. So to prepare the elderberries, I am not gonna to worry too much about the small stems and I just wanna make sure I'm getting the bigger stems off. And so the fastest and easiest way to do this is just take your humble head and hold it upside down like this and we're going to put kind of all of those berries together and I'm just going to cut off right about where the berries start and I'm going to cut it off right there. Super fast, super easy. I'm going to fill up my pan. Once you get down to the bottom of the bowl, you'll make sure you dump in all of the rest of your good berries. You don't want to waste any of those that have fallen out. Now you do want to know that these will stain your clothing, so don't get it on your clothing if you can help it. And there we go. A pan full of wonderful elderberries. Once I have all my elderberries prepared in my pan, then I want to add in my add-ins. So a few allspice berries, I'm probably going to put just, yeah, I love allspice, so I'm going to put a couple of pinches in there. This is some cardamom pods and some cardamom. I'm going to put some of those in there. Oh, these are such wonderful spices. And you know, when the winter time comes, I'm going to be so glad to have these warming spices in my elderberry syrup because as we talked about earlier, um, they are warming as well as being very helpful at fighting viruses and um, bacteria, pathogenic bacteria. A couple of sticks of cinnamon, and as I talked about, one star anise. We don't want to do too much star anise because it's such a powerful flavor. Then we're going to add in only about a cup of water, maybe even not that much. I just want to basically cover the bottom of my pan. All right, so because really what we want is we want to have mostly the berry juice in there. Now, once I have my spices in, I do want to put those spices down in the bottom um, under the where the water is so that it can the flavor can really come through. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of stir those around and kind of make sure they're kind of down there towards the water so that um, the flavor really comes through. I'm going to put my lid on. Put it on the burner. I'm going to keep an eye on it. Put it about on medium and let it cook really well for 30 to 40 minutes. So while our elderberries are simmering, I want to go ahead and talk about why we are cooking the elderberries. Did you know that elder flowers don't require any processing? You can just eat those right off the bush if you wanted to. But all the other parts of elder, including the elder berries, contain high levels of a glycoside that converts into cyanide in the human body. The way that we 
prevent that from bothering us is that we inactivate the glycoside with heat. You need to heat the elderberries from 30 to 40 minutes in order to inactivate that glycoside. Otherwise it would convert into cyanide in the human body. and We wouldn't want that. You'd be throwing up all over the place and we want this to be good medicine for us. So we want to heat it 30 to 40 minutes just to be super safe. So while these elderberries are cooking, I want to take a moment to take the lid off and show you what's going on in here. So the elderberries themselves are not submerged in the water. There is enough water in the bottom of the pan so we don't run into a dry pan and the water creates a steam and the steam when the lid is on is what is cooking the elderberry. So we're going to go ahead and put the lid back on and let them cook. Another add-in I want to put in my elderberry syrup that I need to prepare while it's simmering is ginger. I love ginger and you can always find a knob of ginger in my refrigerator because I use it in lots of different things. I even try and make a drink with it every morning or so, especially in the winter time because it's so wonderful, not only tasting but also medicinally as an herb. So we want the ginger to be fresh, not cooked. So that's why I'm going to prep it now and I'm going to put it in after I take it off the heat. Fresh ginger is powerful. It's powerful as an antibacterial and an antiviral herb. In fact, renowned herbalist Stephen Booner says, if you are using ginger as an antiviral, the fresh juice cannot be surpassed in its effectiveness. Isn't that awesome? Fresh ginger can also help thin mucus and get it flowing, and it can help reduce bronchial inflammation and help with breathing, and it can reduce coughing as much as codeine-based cough syrups. Not only that, but its pain-relieving abilities rival that of ibuprofen. Plus, ginger acts as an adjuvant or a synergist, which means that it will boost the effectiveness of all the other herbs that we have in this elderberry syrup, including elderberry. I definitely want to add this to my medicine. So I'm going to go ahead and grate about an inch or two. I'm not going to bother peeling this. I don't ever peel my ginger. To me, it seems kind of pointless. Um, it's fiber if nothing else. And especially putting in elderberry syrup, we're going to strain it anyway. I'm going to go ahead and grate about an inch or two of this knob. There we go. All right, so our elderberries have cooked for 30 to 40 minutes, and now I'm gonna do a couple of things to process now. I've got my elderberries off the heat, taking off the lid. Mm, oh my goodness, it smells like elderberries. I am going to take the berries off the top here and put them in a bowl to make them a little bit easier to process. And you remember we did the ginger, so I am going to um, put that ginger now that we grated, I'm going to go ahead and put that in this hot juice that's still at the bottom of the pan. I'm going to stir that in there and I'm just going to let that sit with the lid on because we don't want to lose those aromatic oils through the evaporation. So while that is sitting in there, I'm going to go ahead and process these berries now. And the way I'm going to do that is I have a stainless steel potato ricer. This works great for all kinds of herbal straining. You don't want to use an antique potato ricer because of high levels of lead and potentially other um, nasty heavy metals. So buy yourself a new stainless steel one. If you do a lot of herbal processing, you will find that really useful for a lot of different things. And I'm just going to go ahead now and put these berries one batch at a time in here because as I said earlier, you know, the berries are primarily seed and we want to make sure that we are getting as much of the pulp and juice out of these berries as we possibly can. I dropped some in the bottom of my container and that's not a problem. We're going to strain it again before we put it uh, in our jar. So I'm just going to go ahead and see how nicely this works to press out that juice. So now I have the juice of the berries all pressed out. I'm going to go ahead. The ginger has been setting in the hot juice here for several minutes while I've been finishing this up. It's ready to go now. I'm going to go ahead and, oh my, that smells amazing. Not only does it smell like elderberry, it smells like spices and ginger. I'm going to go ahead and pull out the cinnamon sticks. And then I am going to go ahead and 
just a little bit of, there's not a lot left in here, as you can see. This doesn't make a whole lot. It's amazing how many berries it takes to make elderberry juice. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the press so I can press out the ginger. Because we want all of that good ginger juice in there. Now I'm going to put it in a jar and I'm gonna strain it through a fine strainer. that whole pan of berries didn't make a lot of juice. It takes a lot of elderberries to make a lot of juice, but that's just my first batch. When I went out and collected the berries off the bushes, there were a lot of berries on the bushes that hadn't ripened yet. So this is gonna be a multi-day, multi-step process. I'll be going out and collecting more berries over the next week or two, or maybe even three, depending on how long it takes them to ripen. The hotter the weather it is, the probably the faster they're going to ripen. Now, you have a couple of options with this. If you want to start taking the elderberry right away, I'm gonna tell you how I do that. But if you wanted to wait until fall or winter, you could just go ahead and freeze this until you were ready to start taking the elderberry. If I had a big jar of juice, what I would do is I would probably pour this much out and then I would process it, getting it ready to take, and then I would still freeze the rest. I don't want to have it all in my refrigerator if I have a lot of juice because it's not going to last forever in the refrigerator, but we're going to do something to help extend its life in the refrigerator because just as juice, it will go bad very quickly in the refrigerator. So here's what we're going to do. There's two things I'm going to add to it, both to help the flavor and to help it last longer in the refrigerator to help preserve it. And those are raw organic honey and brandy. And so I've got about a half of a cup or so of juice there. While it's warm, I want to add, not hot because I want to make sure my honey stays raw, but when it's warm, it will go ahead and mix that honey in pretty good. I'm going to add, uh, I don't know, about half the amount of juice that I have. I'm going to add about that much honey or maybe a little more. It's really more of an art than a science. And then I'm going to shake it good to get that honey incorporated into the warm juice before I add my brandy in. And then I'm going to put about as, about as much honey as I put in. That's about how much brandy I'm going to put in as well. About a half of a cup or so. And there we go. There we have our elderberry syrup medicine. Now I take about a tablespoon of this a day to help prevent illness and more if I feel like I'm getting sick. I hope you make some elderberry syrup. It is delicious and it's an effective way to help support good health. If you want a printable recipe, hop on over to my blog at tamradegaya.com and please comment below and let me know if you have any ideas for other good add-ins and tell us how your elderberry syrup turns out. If you want to learn more, be sure to watch my other videos and be sure to check out my blog and classes on my website at tamradegaya.com. And if you like this, please give a thumbs up below and hit the subscribe button. I hope this was helpful. May all your life be luminous.